guests feel very welcome in Montpellier, Madame uh, Isabelle Toussard, uh, who will give uh, an input this morning. So thank you very much uh, for uh, supporting this uh, symposium. Uh, we must set an example and act as a driving force uh, towards the private landowners to, to show that it's possible to help uh, new entrants to, to set up here in our properties. For that, we are implementing at the Metropole level uh, an active strategy to help uh, these project developers to set up uh, in business. A territory such as ours also can play can also play a role in coordinating the various actors, public actors, by making an agreement between uh, all of them on the priori priorities and on the methods, new methods of collaboration. We have to invent new tools, new engineering, new technical engineering, administrative engineering, it's very hard, new legal uh, engineering to facilitate uh, the setting up of, of these new farmers. That the issues that are in the heart of your conference uh, are extremely important for us. I'm going to talk about um, the newbie network, thematic network, and show some highlights um, of the work we've done, the things we've achieved, new entrants, both successes, bringing new things to the family farm, or newcomers are, I think, very important for the ongoing vitality of farming uh, and the agricultural sector in rural regions. Why? Because they often introduce new skills and competences into agriculture. Um, often when they come from outside the agriculture, they have had experience in other jobs, they bring new skills like opportunity skills or strategic skills or communicating skills, um, but also they all bring a lot of new networks that don't exist in traditional agriculture, um, but are very important in developing new farming systems. Um, they bring capital from other, uh, other work which they um, gained in other sectors. And we had a yearly newbie award, so we um, um, organized that uh, new entrants presented their newbie business models, their new entrant business models, often completely different models than we know in traditional agriculture. And we organized international exchanges for advisors, for policy makers, for new entrants, so you can learn from different countries. Um, because in the other countries, new models have been developed and it's nice to learn from them. Throughout the project, we organized about 100 of these discussion circles, uh, reaching about 5,000 people who actively participated in these uh, discussion circles. And the topics were very broadly. So we discussed things like access to land, farm succession, business models, access to labor. Agricultural succession um, and new entrants um, were into farming was hardly a topic in existing curricula throughout Europe. So we selected around 19 inspirational case studies throughout Europe, so 10 in every country. If you look at the business models of the newcomers within the 19 case studies, we see that they mainly develop business models focused on differentiation, so niche products and markets, organic farming, short chains, direct sale. Um, they work in alternative food networks, community supported agriculture, co-production, and we see a lot of on-farm diversification, so models focusing on pedagogical aspects, on social aspects, on recreation. And often these models are highly locally bound. bound. All these case studies are presented on a map you can find through the website and also through our toolkit, on which I will tell something more later on. Um, and from every farm, if you go to that map, you can click on a farm um, and you can see something about their entry model, see something about their business model, on their motivation, on why they started that business. So this you can see a video. All these uh, uh, movies are on YouTube and I think it's great to mention that yesterday we just checked. Uh, we have now over 60,000, almost 60,000 views. So we made practice abstracts, for example, on capital. So this is on access to capital, on crowdfunding, um, on advice, and we produced around 120 of these practice abstracts on all these topics, on capital, on land, on succession. We also developed, uh, by the lead of uh, Fachhochschule in Soest, uh, 
all kind of pedagogical materials. We developed um, by SUS four modules, which, which is uh, uh, on entrepreneurship, uh, on niches in production and markets, on social and technological innovations, uh, and on agricultural diversification. Hopefully it will be adopted and we will advertise it a lot, but it will be adopted in a lot of educational institutions, helping to get people to know more about um, how to start new businesses. We bring together in the newbie toolkit and you can uh, go into the toolkit and then click on going through your country, uh, click on the different topics like for example uh, business uh, funding and then you will find all relevant information in your own language and also in other languages. Uh, go to our website, look at these movies because I think they're very inspiring and get inspired. Well, what we've seen in your presentation, mostly the, the biggest problem for newcom uh, farmers is get a loan. Uh, what we also see, uh, newcom farmers are, have uh, another way of farming, a more uh, future farming, more sustainable farming. And what I want to see is the politicians change the way of uh, making uh, rules for farmers, what now is for yeah, the intensive farming system. There are di uh, different kinds of ways to look at uh, the uh, finance the farm. So bringing these people around one table has brought us a lot of insights and uh, a lot of valuable uh, networks. So thanks very much uh, for the opportunity to speak today. Today we thought it would be nice to broaden a bit the picture and look at uh, something that is new in the European policy landscape, which is the long-term vision for rural areas, and look at generation renewal under this, because it's also important there are opportunities that are highlighted in the paper as well uh, for rural businesses. So rural areas are really key for um, what we call ecosystem services, so taking care of nature and everything that it can produce. Uh, for society at large, so rural people are really the stewards of, of nature in that, in that uh, context. Um, there are a lot of uh, promising developments around the bioeconomy and the circular economy. Um, the ecological uh, transition has, has really brought back the spotlight on rural areas because that's uh, where it needs to happen as well a lot. And digital transitions. Next to that, there are increasing demands uh, from society for more sustainable food, shorter value chain, as well as access to green spaces, recreational. So the importance of rural areas as next is achieving climate, energy and biodiversity targets, uh, almost half of the respondents. So this is very uh, important. We're looking at the, uh, again at opportunities for rural areas to participate. And I picked just a few of, of some ideas that, that came uh, that came forward uh, as advice from these stakeholders to, to take up in the vision. And for example, they highlight, again, to connect to the debate in the Q&A session, that there are two options uh, for farming, either that we see emerging as recommendations, either to relocalize production, shorten uh, supply chains and apply regenerative organic agriculture, or use of technology to reduce cost and produce um, uh, more and more efficiently for the bioeconomy. So we came up uh, with, um, we brought all the all these insights together into, into this document and came up with 10 shared goals for 2040 that are arranged in four um, areas of work. Um, and um, these four areas are, are that rural areas by 2040 should be stronger with communities that have more power to decide on their own future and to act upon it, better access to services and more more enabling conditions for social innovation and innovation in general. Uh, rural areas should be better connected, uh, digital connectivity, but also uh, physical mobility through transport links uh, and new mobilities. They should be more uh, resilient. A stream of actions that are launched together with this vision. One is the Rural Action Plan. This is really a EU level uh, list of, of actions. It includes nine flagships initiatives and 15 other accompanying actions. 
Uh, some interesting ones for you today could be the Rural Revitalization Platform. This is a platform that is going to be set up to assemble all the good ideas and good practices that can be used by the rural communities to improve their situation, especially the ones that are losing population and that, that are in decline. So typically in this platform, we could take up a lot of the practice abstract and descriptions and inspiring videos that have been produced by, by Newbie. There's a flagship on research and innovation for rural communities where we will look at the needs of rural innovators specifically and how the knowledge and innovation systems is catering for their needs. Um, whether there's a focus on initiative on startups as well. There will be uh, initiatives on mobility and rural digital futures, uh, energy, climate. So everybody needs to come on board to make this vision uh, happen. Very interesting, inspiring, and also helps a lot to position our activities of the newbie project and new entrants into farming on a higher level of what's going on on European level with regard to rural areas and their future. The next presentation from Doris Letina from Slovenia, Vice President of SEJA, the European Council of Young Farmers. To say I'm familiar with the project of newbie from very beginning we exceeded the goals uh, from the beginning to connect all these amazing stories uh, from the people who had strong will and uh, motivation to become a farmer and then to the real stories, to the real uh, also challenges, but to the challenges that you succeed to turn into opportunities. CEJA is European Council of Young Farmers. I'm also a young farmer myself. I live and work on a family farm in Slovenia. So CEJA is a dialogue between young farmers and key decision makers, not just key decision makers in European institutions, but also to all other stakeholders. We are sitting together. We are different stakeholders from farmers, policy makers, researchers, and we have in common that we have a responsibility that we build this sector together. So each needs to take their own responsibility, play their own role, and co-create this sector that will enable us uh, not just fair income, uh, sustainably developing of our farms, but on the end of the day, decent life uh, for farmer and also um, good connections, a good uh, good connections with all different uh, stakeholders including, uh, of course, society and the final consumer. Also, our responsibility as young farmers is that we are active. Look, my name is uh, Gauthier Ricordo. I'm uh, 43. And um, I'm, I'm graduating microbiology, but uh, at the end of my master, I realized I, realized I wanted to work uh, in agriculture. And um, I lived in a farm, and uh, the, the owner of the farm uh, was uh, raising pigs. And our strategy to, uh, for me to, to, to be associated in this farm, uh, our strategy was to, to, to optimize the, the farm. It's not the, the main difficulty was the human relation with my associate, because um, you can share a goal and a common vision of the development of the farm at the beginning, but after six years, it's, it's possible that the vision diverge. Uh, but it was uh, almost six years of uh, learning, a very interesting learning, developing the farm. Uh, the farm was an economic success, but, but uh, asked questions about the right way to collaborate. New award winner, Jessica Tepper. We are happy to have you here, together with your husband. And we started very small. I, at that time, was a uh, psychologist. I worked in uh, education for many years. Um, so, uh, giving advice for uh, teachers, uh, talking with the children, which, which were struggling with their learning, with motivation, and that kind of uh, things. So, it's a completely different uh, background. Uh, we built a web shop to sell the beef uh, through the whole country. We only fed them grass, uh, much outdoor. We, uh, we had a big nature management part in our farm. So the differences were becoming uh, more clear to me as well. And we saw, well, this is something we can really set our minds to and, and, and make a change, make an impact. Uh, we really believe in combining uh, 
uh, natural farming practices with high tech because we do believe that is the future of farming only natural farming only the focus on uh, the farming styles of way back yes they that is a, a good way of farming but to in order to feed all the people around the world and we like to focus on our local <laughs> the local uh, the people to feed uh, we do believe that we do need high tech to um, improve the production without uh, harming nature and our environment uh, biodiversity is one, of, is one of the great focus points uh, of our farm. Um, there, weren't, there weren't any meadow birds for the many decades, but since we started the way we farm, they came back. And I think that the new farmers, uh, more than the, uh, the, the farmers that are farming for many decades, new farmers are much more inclined to show what they are doing. They understand how important it is to be visible for policy makers, for researchers, for education, for the customer, very important. Uh, and I think that is one of the strengths of the newcomers. Uh, like, uh, yes, yeah, the policy changes. We are very, um, we, will work, we work with policy makers uh, to show what we do, to tell our struggles uh, from other uh, colleagues. We want to change. We have, want to have an impact. <laughs> this is a picture of uh, our cheese. You can see uh, the cows drinking 100% grass-fed and nature-inclusive, it says. One of the main uh, objectives we have is working together with other farmers who farm a in a similar way because together you are stronger in terms of uh, reaching out to the consumer, uh, to policy makers, we have to work together. Uh, just not just uh, copy each other because that is a tendency many uh, we see a, a lot, but we have to work together because then we can really have an impact. So my name is Stephen Ryan, and our business exclusive is Gargo, and our story goes back to 2013 when we made the, the decision to move home to the farm. So 2013 is where we sat down. And we went looking at farming in a 21st century way about sustainability and environment. Compared to the past generation of my dad that looked at farming in the 20th century, we had to bring it forward and look for the future. So we were looking at different ways to do it and different ideas that we could come up with. And snails, for us, ticked a lot of the boxes. And then we get the product, seven years of work to get this fair. But the next stage and looking to the future again and pushing this a step further the next step we're looking for now is to do protein always looking to the future mm, so with the three new entrance stories we were not uh, able to have longer q and a sessions but please feel free to contact all the new entrants more respectful dialogue between the farmers and between between the farmers among them and between farmers and the rest of society